Awesome. All right, guys, now we're sitting down with Thomas West and he owns Renegade Racing. Renegade, is it truck repair? Is it? Yep, so we got a bunch of different companies that kind of run you under Renegade. You see them all over the place. Yeah, that, so. yeah, yeah, man. But, you know, uh, I, I was given the nickname Renegade when I was, when I was a kid and it's on my knuckles it kind of just stuck with me and then as we started making i made my transition into owning businesses and stuff like that i just named everything renegade you so just captured the renegade so you got the stick shift s2000 here which is one of the few cars that fit into the new crossover rules that you may or may not be responsible for yeah. implementing forcing <laughs> the implementation into the stick shift world so jason miller finally let a few Absolutely. In, and, and you fit the class perfectly, like the, the spirit of the class, I would right, say. Right. So there's no, like, it's not like you got some pro mod that kind of squeezed in. You know, you Correct. fit the spirit. Uh, how fast has the car been? Uh, as of right now, we went 758 at 190 okay. on stock suspension. And now we've changed everything. And we 60 footed faster. We've been to the eighth faster. Um, so we haven't ran it all the way out yet. Um, but we're getting ready to do that this weekend, and we're hoping to put this thing in the sixes. That would, I mean, I know you said you're hoping to, but you kind of have to also. <laughs> I know, I know, at this race, for real. Yeah, it's not really like a maybe, oh, that'd be nice to do. It's like, it's like oh, I kind of have to do this at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's time to go fast. Yeah, Absolutely. you're here, it's, it's yeah. time to do it. But the car obviously has a lot of help from, you know, people like Atkins and right, right. Tick and... Yeah. All the, uh, the normal stick shift culprits, I guess you could say. Correct, correct. Um, I've been blessed to have a lot of good people um, that I'm friends with in this industry. Um, one of them, uh, yes, Jonathan Atkins. You know, a lot of people joke at the track that he's my dad and we call each <laughs> other dad and son. Um, but he's kind of spearheaded me into uh, stick shift racing and teaching me the do's and don'ts. He also tunes the car. Um, the engine that's in the car was built by Jonathan. Um, matter of fact, he stuck it in there. Um, it was at his house for a couple months, and he did a whole bunch of design and stuff to the car. And then uh, Justin Brangers um, with uh, JB Clutches and Brangers 2JZ, he, uh, he's done all the suspension on the car. Um, he does all the clutches, um, the clutch tuning everything else yeah. so those two uh, when it comes to working the car and figuring it out they're primarily responsible for it tick performance and, and nitrous outlet those two companies and of course red horse performance yeah those three have done more for me in this car than anybody combined you know really? so yes um red horse has plumbed this car three times you know so I, they're probably tired of seeing it yeah you know what i mean but <laughs> They know um, it well. They could do it in their sleep. Absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, Matt over at Tick. I mean, yeah. before coming here, I drove there overnight and picked up parts in the middle of the night at Tick and drove all the way back. So um, the support, especially not just for this car, but the stick shift racing industry itself is absolutely ridiculous. I think that's what's really awesome about stick shift. And I think that's kind of the theme almost of this video is how the Crazy. community yeah, is and dude. the people in it and the competition and the love of the competition and like other racing you're like okay whoever is in the lane next to me like it doesn't matter but like stick shift this class like everybody knows each other on a personal level yeah for the most part that's Absolutely. in that next lane from yeah. them like you know the top 10 guys are pretty close to each other Absolutely. i would say it's yeah. it's weird class for that reason but that's yeah. what makes it so great and and it's it's cool and the 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 thing is is nick coleman shane becker um before we came here i drove to cincinnati and dropped off main shafts for their transmissions you know and then a week prior to that i was back in cincinnati i was delivering pistons to shane um and then vice versa they've been doing things for me to help get me here uh, my wife's uh, stick shift cars actually in Wisconsin at Nick Coleman's shop, you know, so we work so closely with each other and at the same time, and this is the cool part about it, is uh, we'll sit here and and antagonize each other to be faster, you know what I mean? And, but if, and then we'll help each other be faster. Like if I was to break, which I did, we, when we first got here we made one pass and we broke some things on the car, um, Shane, Nick, Chris Moore, 
everybody, Taylor Thurston, that's over in Sean Madden's camp, everybody was over here fixing the car. Well, Chris did break his transmission and you didn't did. even blink. And you're like, well, I got my spare right here. Yeah. And it's already in his it's car. It's already in his car. So, and, and that's that's the thing. Uh, even in Wisconsin, man, uh, uh, Nick's wife, she broke her motor in her truck. And I was like, oh, I got this one. You know what I mean? Just because we wanted her to go out there and annihilate in her class. You know, so it's, it's such a great community. And we all, I can't, and, and like you said, we're so close. We know, everybody knows everybody. And there's not a lot of us in this outlaw class. Yep. You know, so if he's broke, I ain't got nobody to race. And, and we look at it a lot just like that. You know, we don't hold each, anything over each other's head or anything like that. We want each other to go as fast as we possibly can and challenge one another. And it's just yeah. the greatest racing atmosphere I've ever been a part of. Well, even last night over at Chris's camp, yeah, Chris Moore, he was having some suspension stuff and Nick Coleman's there giving a lecture on suspension, basically. we. You know, once Nick starts talking, everybody kind of gathers because he, <laughs> oh, yeah. he kind of knows suspension pretty well. So it's like, what's he talking about? Let me, uh, exactly. let me try to write this down. Yeah. And he was basically giving a lecture to everyone on suspension, a bunch of stick shift guys mm -hmm. and all of us. And you know, I think Chris will probably put those into action, and I bet his car will Absolutely. work a little better and, after and, that. And, and like you said, that's, that's one thing in this class. There's no secrets. I've noticed, like, bracket racing, no prep racing. They got blankets over the hood and all this extra crap. With us, there's absolutely no secrets. Yeah. We have minimal rules, you know, go fast, have a 28 inch tire. You know, that's, we don't care, you know, and we literally help each other do this. And, and we all know we're kind of governed to the speed of what our transmission is going to hold. There, there's no beautiful transmission out there that's going to hold 5,000 wheel horsepower right now. Yeah, it doesn't matter you know? how much money you have. No. You're not, like, you can have the most amount of money in the class and you're not getting a better transmission than the guy next to you. Exactly. You're really yeah, not. You know, it's, and, and that's kind of where we're at with this. You know, and then, of course, with stick shift racing, it's anybody's race. You could have the slowest car. Talk about Miles Kerr and, what, two years ago at, at Texas 2K? He had the slowest car in the class and won, yep. you know, won the race. And, and it's like I said, all of us, we're going out there with everything that we got blazing glory and we're breaking transmissions and everything else. This is a really hard sport to be in, you know? So it doesn't matter what you got. Like you said, you could be the richest guy on the planet. Yeah, there's an equalizer. There's an equalizer between the, the motor and between the rear end. Absolutely. A, a great one. And then also, you know, a ton <clears throat> of driver, which, you know, I was talking to IDS and, David's kind of like, yeah, you know, they're taking the driver a lot more and more out of it, mm -hmm. which is the natural progression. Right. But, you know, he's not wrong. Like with once it's dog engagement, once you have slipper clutches, right. you, you definitely start to take driver error out of it from what Correct. it used to be with a diaphragm clutch and synchros. Like, yeah, that was tough. That exactly. was like, <laughs> that, that was grueling. Tough. Yeah, <laughs> Like not yeah. to say this isn't tough, but man. I wouldn't want to be trying to even do similar with a freaking Correct. synchro and yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, my wife, her car is, and uh, we're getting rid of that. We're gonna go ahead and dog box it, but uh, you're right, it's uh, it's difficult. Her car is a mid eights car, and uh, it's TR Still sixty very fast. sixty, <laughs> yeah, TR sixty sixty um, diaphragm clutch, and uh, yeah, it's uh, you got to be quick. And you got to think and not screw up. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you don't get into that gear all the time, you know? Right, Sometimes right. it just doesn't happen for you. Absolutely. With the synchros. So an interesting thing happened the other day on the internet where somebody, no need to mention the names, but attacked your character a little bit. And yep. I rarely had seen so many comments of people defending your character wholeheartedly and right. you know I didn't really know much about you before that and I saw that and I was like wow like because a lot of people I know and respect a lot were defending it and that that to me stood out a lot to to have a character that so many people were just like not you like as a character but to have like a a person Absolutely. to be the type of person that so many people just immediately hop on and defend it seemed right. really really cool and really like 
I'm sure that had to stand out pretty heavily to you. Absolutely, and it felt good. You know, the the thing is, is we was kind of having a conversation a minute ago over at Chris Moore's camp, and I've been through some rough times in my life. I've, I've went through trials and tribulations, and I made a determination in my life a long time ago that I was going to do everything I could to be a good person, you know, and, and not just to, you know, my family or somebody close to me or anything like that. I, 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 I made determination to change the person that I was at that time. And I just believe that I need to treat everyone the way I want to be treated. You know, and that's not to say that we can't have a good time and joke on one each other yeah. and, you know, and stuff of that nature. But, you know, I, if, if somebody needs something, you know, I want to be able to help, you know, if, if I'm able to do that, you know, and I, I just, I've maintained that and I live by that, you know, and all these people that have been a part of everything that I got going on and have seen, um, they have firsthand seen that I live by that code that I have set for myself. And yeah, you know, when it, whenever something came up and it, it just, uh, it was shocking to me too, you know? And, and, and it, I kind of teared up with it, you know? It, it, made me, it made me feel good and it gave me, and of course I don't need that. You know, I don't need someone to tell me, hey, what you're doing is a good thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I made the determination to do it myself. But it made me smile and to see that, hey, what I'm doing, all right, is actually making a difference and other people are seeing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I, to me, I was like, man, I hope that if I'm ever in a situation where somebody attacks my character, I can have the same thing. I, you know, I, I would imagine most men are like, right, man, I hope that I live up to like Those that standards. kind of level yeah, it, of defense. Like, yeah. you know, the the kind of person that people would hop in the defense of, not the kind of person that people would be like, ah, you know. Yeah. He kind of screwed me over, you know, like he owed me 20 bucks, like right, just right. a little shit like that. And yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was great. And, and like you said, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just, in, like I said, we all put our shoes on the same, but these, this wasn't run of the mill characters that were out here saying these things. We're talking big name industry leading yeah. people. And it really just made me sit back and think that, hey, the things that I'm doing and the things that I'm trying to promote have really made a difference and people are seeing that. Yeah, know? so to maybe let's give a little bit of like the the condensed version of what we were talking about over there. Yeah. And because, you know, some people, not to disparage anybody's struggles, but some people say, oh, I've been through a lot. Yeah. But, you know, they might have actually you know, not actually been through all that much. So maybe you need to give a little more context. There. Yeah. So I, 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 uh, you know, I grew up extremely poor, you know. Where at? Uh, in Nashville. Okay. All right. So I grew up in downtown Nashville, East Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I, I never knew my father. All right. My mother was a drug addict. She was in and out, in and out. Um, so there was times that I didn't, I came home and she wasn't home and I didn't see her for weeks. You know, struggled to eat. I lived on an enclosed porch. Um, it was rough, you know. Um, I slept on the porch of a trailer. You know, it was bad. Um, I, uh, as time went on, I ended up joining the military and doing some other things in my life. But when I got out, I started circling in that, in that atmosphere of where I grew up at. I learned to fight when I was really young. You know, I had to defend myself. I grew up and had nothing. Um, and I got, I got angry for some reason. I started drinking a lot, and uh, I, uh, I ended up going to prison for this, you know. And after the military? After the military. Okay. So I did three years, nine months, and 21 days, and I'll never forget it because I had to sign the deal away, you know what I mean? And after about 30 days of being in there, you know, it, it, roughly a month, I made a decision that I was never gonna come back. Like, this was not the life for me, you know? So, I started soul searching and doing things and trying to figure out how I could change that person that I was into something new, you know? And <clears throat> education was really big, so I started educating myself. I started trying to figure out, I wanted to open up my own businesses. I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that. And 
you got to learn how to do those things. You don't just do them, yeah. you know. So I started learning, um, and I started putting in that effort while I was there, you know, of being a kind person, you know. Um, and that's why I, I live so I, – I, I practice and preach that so much is to be kind to other people. So I just started practicing that, preaching it while I was in there. And don't get me wrong, I still slip up every now and then. You know, you allow – you know, emotions and stuff to take over. But for the most part, I always stayed tried and true to that. And I made those determinations there. So when I got out, you know, I, it was a struggle, you know. And I started turning my life around. I went to school. I stayed in school. I stayed in class. I learned everything that I could possibly could. And then, you know, I went to work. I started my own first company and stuff of these natures. And I was doing good. I, all these uh, struggles that the average person, the inmate, gets out and faces. I faced every one of them, but I faced them and I, I didn't turn around. I didn't let anything stop me. All the no's, all the this ain't gonna happen, everything else, I just kept pushing forward, you know, and making it happen and making smart decisions. And even though sometimes I'd screw up and, you know, oh, this, I made this purchase for this product and it didn't work out, you know what I mean? But I didn't give up. You know, I just took that as a lesson and I was like, all right, all right, I need to move my business model this way. So I continued to do that and uh, I, did, I got to a point where I was doing really good in my life. You know, uh, we had a business going, um, I was happily married. You know, I, today I have three wonderful kids. Um, I, I, I was doing all these great things and uh, I was kind of telling you about that over there. I, uh, I got to feeling really sick. Um, I just couldn't get better. I was constantly down and there was um, finally I ended up going I'm not, I'm not a really doctor person I, if, you know you get a cold you just Same go and take some Robitussin or something um, finally ended up going to the doctor and it, and it turned out I had lymphoma um, so that was a, a big you know factor in my life to where I asked a lot of questions why you know like I, I've, I went through all these struggles in my life and I've turned my life around to be such a great person I went into that woe is me phase you know yeah. and depression and stuff of that nature and it took me a little while to turn around from that you know uh, lymphoma is, is, a, is a terminal is a terminal cancer it'll live with me for the rest of my life um, how many years ago did you get that diagnosis uh, 2020 2019 okay. 2020 yeah. yep. so uh, I, uh, I I had to make decisions then I went into this depression stage and I, I know this is just absolutely asinine but I was watching that movie with Matthew McConaughey I was sitting on the couch and he just said you gotta keep living man and that just that resonated with me and I went to sleep that night and I talked to my wife the next day I guess I had an epiphany and I was like well you gotta start living you know and I gotta start doing the things that I've always wanted to do and a lot of them were just dumb things that I really didn't need to do. I wanted a Lamborghini, so I sold a house and bought a Lamborghini, and I hated the car. Um, but, yeah, I mean, my true passion was racing. I liked going fast. So then I got rid of that, and then I got the S2000 and started building it and doing other different things. And one of those things, and I'm, I'm so appreciative of my wife for this, is even though I was racing and all this stuff, I was like, dude, I want to come up with my own racing company, like just a brand or something, yeah. you know? So that's when Renegade Racing was born, and I had an idea to make some shirts and sell them at the drag strip, kind of like everybody else's idea. Yeah. But I was like, hey, if we're going racing, we can sell shirts there. If it happens, you know, I had a bunch of good, funny ideas for shirts. I said, if it happens, we can start this. And, you know, uh, once upon a time, I was talking to Kyle Loftus at 1320 Video. Me and him are good friends. He's filming my cars. One of the best people yeah. ever. Yeah. And he's like, Tom, you're a character. He's like, you should do YouTube. You should do everything else. So I was like, all right. So whenever we did this and started this whole brand, um, it was kind of a joke. And we were going to see if it worked. And we made 150 shirts, and my wife, sold, my wife and a friend of mine sold them off the back of a golf cart in an hour at LS Fest. 150 of them. I was like, I couldn't believe it. So then she she pushed me more than anything. She's like, let's go get a vendor trailer. And I was like, all right. So we went and got a vendor trailer and then we started making all kinds of shirts. She had ideas, I had ideas. And then I wanted, so that kind of took off. That was happening. We started the YouTube page. We started uh, um, social media, Facebook and all that stuff. 
and that was kind of taken off. And then I, we moved, we bought a new house, and I built a huge shop behind my house. And I put a dyno in, like a, I put an all-wheel drive dyno in. Like I just wanted to do things so I could film. I wanted my own little filming area. Yeah. That's what the whole idea was. <laughs> and that way I could have my own little cars in there and all this extra stuff. And then all my buddies were like, can you tune my car? Can you do this? Can you do that? Well, I'm operating another business and it's hard for me to stay there. So I hired a friend of mine. He started working on the cars during the day. I'd tune at night. And then that kind of just skyrocketed to the point that there's five full-time employees there. And I'm like, I got to do something else. I got to get this stuff away from my house. Yeah. So now we built a 12,000 square foot facility. All these people that I've been doing business with, Nitrous Outlet, Tick Performance, Red Horse, everybody's jumped in to help. Um, we have the largest display room for a speed shop in the state of Tennessee. Um, there's probably a quarter million dollars worth of product in our display area. Where is the shop at? Clarksville, Tennessee. Clarksville, okay. Now, um, we have uh, I, the, the biggest concept that I wanted to bring back that I miss is the old school speed shop. So where you could go in, I have people call me all the time, they're like, hey man, do you have this size push rod? And I'm like, no, it's gotta be ordered as everything. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, dude, let's stock that. All right, let's stock everything. So I've gotten with Matt over at Tick. I mean, we've got every push rod coming, every size, valve spring retainers, on the shelf cam kits, intercoolers, whatever you could possibly think of. I've teamed up with Renegade Race Fuels. We have all the fuel That's in awesome. stock, on hand, ready to go. Red Horse has gave us every plumbing fitting known to man. We've got it on the shelves. Nitro Salad has plum manifolds in there, everything that you can think of. We have turbos from different turbo manufacturers, all this stuff so that if somebody needs something, you can come in and get it. And then when you go in there, you know, the biggest thing about building a race car is like you see all this stuff, you're like, yeah, you know? Oh yeah, it gets you fired up. I go in my speed shop by us all the time and they're similar, they, they actually stock products. Yeah, there's dude. actually things on the shelves. There's Motion Raceworks parts. There's, like you're saying, there's tick parts, there's cams, there's, right. there's the things that you actually might want that day. It's, yeah. it's awesome. And then they order things for you and you actually get to sit down and talk to somebody that's educated Absolutely. and knows and what they're talking about. And it's doing the same thing that you're doing. You know what I mean? And that's one of the things that I, as we've made this transition into me building and developing this new facility, I'm like, and I've went all in on it. This is probably and we've been t having this whole conversation, cancer, everything else that I've been through in my life. The hardest thing I have honestly ever done is build a new facility. <laughs> Holy crap. Every time I turn around, it's something else. I had to pay $15,000 to the power company for them to put in a power pole. Like I'm, get, I'm buying the power from you and I gotta pay for the power yeah. pole? Like it's crazy. But anyways, we're getting through it and it's a, it's a struggle, but i have like, man, I wanted to do all kinds of things. We're gonna have a huge grand opening. It'd be cool if you'd fly up and come to it. Um, some of the things that I've implemented, we went to Sam Ash Music and my wife was just shaking her head at me, but she thinks I'm half retarded anyways. But they had a huge stage set up there and they were having going out of business sale. And I'm talking about a full on stage like you would see like Jelly Roll or some famous yeah. artist on. And I just kept looking at it and they wanted $8,000 for the stage. And it was like powder coated red and silver. And I'm like, dude, I just had this idea in my head and I bought it. And she's like, what do you need a stage for? <laughs> and I was like, I got an idea. Figure it out when I get it. <laughs> so now that we got the shop built, we put this stage up and it travels from all the way, to the, the dyno bay has dual doors that roll up on both sides. So when you put a car on the dyno, you can have like the airstream effect yeah. to get all the fumes out of the building. Well, I put the stage up all the way around the dyno. And then on the back side of it, where a car backs up to, there's a 100-inch TV hanging from it. So whenever you're tuning somebody's car or running it, all the dyno numbers go up on the big uh, flat screen TV. And then we have like all the stage lighting shining down on the car. So it looks like a whole amphitheater and a party's going on when you're tuning somebody's car. So. That's a very like Nashville thing, I feel yeah, like. But is that needed? Yeah. No, but is it absolutely insane? Yes, so let's do it. I love and then, that. Like the, I, I, 
one of my buddies, he's a graffiti artist and owns a tattoo shop. Like the whole wall, all dang near all the walls are all graffiti with like hot rod stuff with like the rat fink and all this stuff. It says renegade racing yeah, on it. Yeah. All kinds of cool things on the wall. Like some old school kind of yeah. like graphics like you'd see the old big shifter knob deal. Yes, yeah. All that stuff is graffiti on the walls. Um, I've got a ton. I'm, I'm a big Dale Earnhardt guy and I've collected NASCAR memorabilia my whole life. And like on the inside, I just kind of donated all my beloved little collectibles to the shop. There's NASCAR hoods, uh, Hendrix racing stuff, everything hanging from the rafters. Yeah. You know, so I just wanted to turn it into this, you know, this racer's paradise. And you know, the guys that work there to be extremely proud of where they're working at, inside and out. Like outside, it's got old fuel pumps, like next to where you walk in and all kinds of stuff. Just to bring back that old school speed shop. And it's it's gonna be absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's special, man. I mean, you know, you it's, it's obviously a dying thing. Oh yeah. The old school speed shop and even you know, trustworthy people to work on some on your, your car. Cause right. For a lot of people, this is all they got. This is their baby. This is their right. this is their pride and joy. And I see it too, so much where people get screwed over by a shop or someone that just doesn't care. And it's it's good to see people that actually care yeah. starting shops because it's you know this world is rampant. The automotive yes. world is rampant with scammers and scum and like people that Everything don't care else. man it's yeah. like it's so sad i don't know if they see a lot of money because there ain't a lot of money in this there ain't <laughs> you know and i tell people that because you know the business that i'm in i do uh industrial refrigeration for like transport companies reefer units cold food storage and stuff of that nature that business is big money yeah you know i've been blessed to be able to do it etc and then you look at the automotive industry and it's nowhere in comparison to that and a lot of people ask, why am I, you know, building this speed shop? Why am I doing this when I know very well there's no money in it, you know? And the truth is, it's the love for it, you know? And I absolutely love it. If we can break even at the end of the month, I'm happy. Because the thing is, at the end of the day, we have a speed shop and we're giving something back to the community and the local racer that ain't out there anymore. For sure. And even like, you know, you're talking about that. I laugh because like 316 speed, a friend of mine, he was telling me, he's like, yeah, I just like dump trucks. Like I race on the side, but like dump trucks are really what I. Exactly. He's like, I just kept buying dump trucks. They they keep making money. Yeah. <laughs> like and stupid things like that that people don't think about. That's like the a truth. dump truck. And, and I see a lot of. This looks glamorous. Yeah, yeah. I, I see a lot of the speed shops and this is no fault of their own. Even good speed shops, ones that really know what they're doing and are great, but the, they, they tend to fail or they shut the doors and stuff of that nature. And the reason is, is just like we just said, there's not a lot of money in it. And then everybody's nickel and diming you and there's scammers and everything else that's going on right now. You know, and it's sad. And that's one of the major factors is, yeah, I just said, if I can break even, I'm happy. All right, but breaking even for somebody that that's only their only bread and butter, that they, they, they can't can. survive. Yeah. You know, and and being that I have a whole other business that provides, you know, my 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 family money, me to go racing and everything else, breaking even is is cool with the speed shop. And a lot of other people can't say that. You know, so it's it's a hard industry to be in you know absolutely well and for you racing you know having a speed shop and buying a bunch of parts and stuff from all these people like it connects you so heavily with the, right. with these brands i was starting to drizzle out there i don't know that's great <laughs> it connects you so heavily with these brands so it's right. like you get not even just a foot in the door but you get a real close relationship and you know not for nothing who are they gonna be more likely to sponsor the guy right, that bought absolutely you know, $50,000 worth of parts from them this year from Speed mm -hmm. Shop and then wants a sponsorship or the guy that just wants the sponsorship and has kind of... Right, right. Doesn't really have a relationship with them. You know, I'm, I'm not, you know, a lot of people, There's a, don't get me wrong, I do have some sponsors that, that help me do this. Red Horse, Tick, King's Performance, Nitro Salad, all these guys help me do a lot of what I'm doing. Um, but at the same time, I feel it's my responsibility to help them a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
um, you know, from content creation and everything else, you know, it, it's it's a very quid per quo business. You know what I mean? And I also feel it's my responsibility that when I'm doing this speed shop stuff and building what I'm trying to accomplish and everything, my loyalty and dedication is to their product. So, and that's one thing that they all know, like we've already got nitrous outlets, like shrine area set up in the display area of the new shop. Um, I, I want to promote their product so bad and sell their product just because they've stood behind me for so long. And, it, and a lot of people might think that, uh, sponsorships this or that and yeah but one of the things is is i just growing up my lifestyle that we talked about being so poor not having anybody there with me and yada 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 to have somebody believe in me like they have you know like there's i will go the extra mile any day for them and i think they see that too yeah you know? and i you know these aren't just like big mega corporations like no you know nitrous outlet it's dave like yep. it's you know what i mean it's like these aren't like they're they're people like they're right. like one or two like maybe like a family owns it or exactly. something these aren't just like big no name corporations yeah. they're all they're all very close and small and tight knit groups they all talk to Absolutely. and i was actually talking to sean madden about it and he was like oh i've been so bad about making videos like told myself i won't make one for uh, until i run sixes and i, I point blank told him i was like don't think about making them for you. Think about making them for the people that support you. Exactly. The sponsors, the people that buy shirts, the people that mm. watch the videos. Like, you're not exactly. making it for you necessarily. You're kind of making it. Yeah. For the, I don't want to say community, but like kind of the overall. And, and everything else that's going promoting their product. Yeah. You know, because hey, whether you run sixes or not, if you, he just went. I think it might have been a personal best. Yeah, it went like you a seven thirteen. Something yesterday, yeah. So even that, that's an accomplishment in itself. You know what I mean? So we need to make a video on that. You know? Let's well, go. Saying, what got there? Be you know fired what I mean? up. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm fired up for him, you know. And the thing about Sean is, is uh he's been through a lot with that car. You know, and that car has fought him, you know. And and that all I guess all of our cars in their own unique way fight us. To, so we can get it to where we want it to be at. You I don't know? know. Old freaking grub worm over there looks like oh. he gives him no problems at all. <laughs> I mean, he, he rarely takes the oil. You know? <laughs> he doesn't have a tool out. He's just standing there. <laughs> you got all your tools out. He's just over there like, yeah, I guess round one is coming up. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> you got it too easy, man. <laughs> yeah, and he tells me all the time, he's like, I'm building another car right now, a Cadillac, and... Uh, uh, we're building, he's actually building the motor for it. We're putting a billet small block in it, but he jokes all the time. He's like, if you want that thing to go fast, all we gotta do is put a Buick Roadmaster in it. I'm like, <laughs> What Cadillac like you building? Um, I have uh, this kind of unique car. Um, it's a CTSV, and I know that ain't unique. Um, it's a coupe, uh, but we call it the gray area, and it is all Mustang suspension underneath it. So torque boxes, everything that you can think of, UPR uppers, I mean, it is full-blown Mustang suspension. So, in our class, you got to have stock-style suspension. Well, it is. It's just a stock Mustang. Yeah, you stock I mean? style could be from any car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with a Cadillac on it. No car ever came with a four-link. Right. Like an actual, true four-link. Yeah. So you so, end up with stock-style Mustang suspension. Exactly. Usually. So it's it's a three-quarter car, um, and uh, we're putting a small block, um, billet small block in it from CFE. They machined it all out big block heads on it, cannon valve. I mean, it'll be stupid, but uh, this is, this, yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking in the realm of X275, guys. This is 5,000 wheel. We're talking somewhere in that ballpark, but the game plan is is to, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet because we just had this conversation of, you know, the, the limiting factor in the middle. You know, I can make all the power in the world, you know, put a uh, turbo 400 in there. It'll go fast. Yeah, you know? say I'm going 580s. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the game plan is is to manipulate it somewhat. How Justin Brangers is building the clutch for it, and uh, we want to try and put that car in the fives. You know, so it would be absolutely insane. Um, but who knows? I, I, I joke with these guys all the time that driving this thing, this IRS that's a death trap. You know, it's, I might as well be driving a Starlet. You see what those things do yeah. down the track. So, 
If yeah, I be starlet. Yeah. If I can drive this, wait until I get in that Cadillac, I tell them, y'all are all on notice. Y'all are doomed. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be in that thing with like good engineered suspension yeah, and everything. Dude. Not that, you know, Honda didn't get it right when they made that, but you know, there's probably something to be improved yeah, on yeah, for absolutely. drag racing. Well, as a joke, um, whenever we get the car done, I'm on the passenger side, like instead of, I'm gonna take like a nitrous outlet bottle holder and I'm gonna put a Keurig in there, all right? So <laughs> your Cadillac. Yeah, so I'm gonna mess with the guys like, and we're gonna make videos of me like reaching down there and grabbing a <laughs> cup of coffee. But I'll be like, it's this easy. <laughs> yeah. What was it in um, Talladega Nights? He's drinking the he's Straight drinking up. the macchiato while he's, <laughs> while he's keeping Ricky off. He's like, I can't get around. <laughs> Just sipping the yeah. coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good deal, man. Uh, where can they find you at? What kind of stuff can we promote here? So you got the shop. You got your personal stuff. Absolutely. Commercial refrigeration. They might not need that. but <laughs> well, well, you never know. Um, Shoprenegade.com. Um, on uh, yeah, Instagram and Facebook, just put in my name, Thomas West, or you can put in Stick Shift Racing, at Stick Shift Racing. And same thing with uh, YouTube, it's either yeah. Renegade Racing or at Stick Shift Racing, you can find us on all those. Where are you the most active on? I'm the most active on my, I'm personally, I'm the most active on my Facebook page. Okay. So just Thomas West on Facebook. Um, and then, of course, Instagram, I'm pretty active on it. Uh, there's uh, weekly uploads to our YouTube channel. And we do a lot of different things on there, um, on the YouTube channel. So I'm not just geared towards racing on the YouTube channel. So like I like doing you know, informational videos. If I'm working on a reefer and I find something interesting that I've been able to diagnose and figure out, I upload that. So we do a lot of DIY stuff on there, as well as our racing videos and everything else. I like to hear that because a lot of people on YouTube, they get into this, what do the people want yeah. versus what do I just want to post? Right. What is just interesting to me this week, yeah, I'll just yeah. post it. Yeah, and that's one of the things I really, I like to challenge myself with things um, and figuring something, I guess that's why I like being a technician or a mechanic is because I like the challenge of figuring it out. I don't like the you know, assembly line doing the same thing over yeah. and over again. When I get on something, I got to use my mind and figure out why it's not working anymore. And when I find something really interesting, like, wow, you know, that I think the general public can use, then I put that out there. Because if I find something that's really cracking me upside the head and I figure it out, you know, I got I, I know what it feels like to be cracked upside the head and try and figure it out. Yeah. So I want to put that out there so somebody else can figure it out. The too. assumption is somebody else is probably struggling with it also. Yeah, absolutely. Or you put it up and somebody comments, do it this way, and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> no joke. <laughs> well, good deal, man. When you're in Bradenton, we'll have to do like a real episode, but this absolutely. was a really fun little, uh, little quick chat. Guys, go check them out on all the things. Let's get to the next driver. We'll see you.